Hello everyone! I hope you're having a good day! In this video we will be covering the first doll from my nostalgic doll series and it's Toph Bei Fong from the animated series Avatar The Last Airbender. As a base for Toph I use this Cave Club doll. As usual I prepare the doll for transformation by removing her factory hair and makeup. But this time in order to remove the rest of her hair I had to cut her head open as this doll snake hole is way too small. When I plan a project, usually I choose a character first and then look for the best fitting doll, but this time everything was different. I bought the doll first and then I tried to remember who she reminds me of. Who is a short girl, has a round head with very pronounced ears and most importantly would look natural with big strong feet. At first I thought maybe it's Chen Li from Street Fighter, but Chen Li has thicker hips, not feet. So I've decided to think about it a bit more and a couple of months ago I've realized that a doll with strong feet would make a perfect earthbender and little Toph is a perfect candidate. Toph is a 12 year old little girl, she has been blind since birth and always lived protected by her rich and noble parents. But I want to be sure she's not trying anything too dangerous. Absolutely not. But when the sun went down, Toph would sneak off to the underground earthbending tournament, where she was the strongest fighter known as the Blind Bandit. Your champion, the Blind Bandit! She was five years old when she first discovered Badger Moles, the first natural earthbenders who taught her how to see using the vibrations of the earth and how to use earthbending. Since my childhood, Toph is my favorite character from the series because she is tough, smart and knows her own value. She also has the best sense of humor as we could see in the episode where the Avatar team went to see a theater play about their own story and Toph was the only one who liked it, especially her own representation in there. Who are you? <laughs> my name's Toph because it sounds like Toph. And that's just what I am. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't have cast it any other way. <laughs> to me, it also shows that Toph has a good connection with herself, knows what she wants, how she feels, and is happy with herself as she is. She also has good boundaries, as she wouldn't let anyone manipulate her, for example, through guilt tripping. Ever since you joined us, you've been nothing but selfish and unhelpful. What? Look here, sugar queen! I gave up everything I had so that I could teach Aang earthbending, so don't you talk to me about being selfish! Sugar queen?! And because Toph can stand her ground, she is often seen as a rude and egoistic character. Which is not true, like for example she was the only character who was ready to listen to Prince Zuko and try to understand and accept him. All your uncle wanted was for you to find your own path and see the light. Now you're here with us. He'd be proud. Ow! What was that for? That's how I show affection. I remember back then when I watched the series for the first time, I was hoping that Toph and Duko will eventually be together, but as an adult I like how everything turned out. And back to the repaint. The face up was mostly an improvisation because Toph is a 2D character and copying her face from the cartoon wouldn't look as good on a doll. So I've decided to give her natural makeup for some extra dimension and I also thought that it would be more interesting if I add different shades of green and blue to her irises for some extra detail. I think that the fun part of making fan art is that you can add your own personal touch to your favorite character.
For the hair, this time I use some acrylic yarn. If you choose to glue hair directly to the doll's head, you have two options. It's gluing the hair as it is or connect them into wefts first. I prefer to work with wefts because they are way more comfortable to work with, which means the end result will also be way cleaner. Speaking about hair in general, I prefer to reroot those heads with nylon hair because it feels more solid. However, each method has its positives and negatives and I try to choose the best solution for every project depending on the result I want to achieve. For example, for short haircuts, yarn hair is the best call as it's easier to style and it looks the most realistic. To style the bun, I made the donut out of a sponge first, pulled her ponytail through it and then covered the sponge with the hair and then secured everything with some hairspray. Now let's get to the outfit. Since it's my first time working with the Cave Club doll, I have to make the pattern completely from scratch using my usual technique with masking tape. I start with making the green costume. For the top I underline the basic pattern and then add some allowances to make it sit more loose.
spans everything was a bit more fun. Here I've decided to take the bottom part from the dress pattern and then adjust it for the legs to fit in. It didn't work out first and I had to adjust it a bit more for the butt to fit in.
I finished the green costume and what do you think? I felt like the parts are not wide enough comparing to what Toph was wearing in the cartoon, so I adjusted the pattern again and made her a new pair. The first pair fit well too, just wasn't accurate enough. The second pair is just perfect. And I thought since I'm already working with green fabric, why not to make accessories right away. I made the bracelets and ankle cuffs out of the same green fabric I used for the costume, artificial leather and beads. In the cartoon you can see that she has some solid metal details there, but I chose beads because this construction will be flexible enough to make the cuffs removable. Next up is her tunic. I made this with the same pattern but made it a bit wider as it will be worn on top of the green clothes. For this piece I use cotton fabric, which means I can't melt the cuts, but what I can do is use fabric glue on the edges. Like this I can have nice clean cuts and save some time on hand sewing. I know some people are pretty skeptical about using glue and paint on clothes, but I wanna say that if you use products that were made special for textile, everything is going to be fine. This time I use glue on the collar as well, just because this type of connection is thinner and for such a small doll every millimeter is important, especially if she is wearing so many layers of clothes. After the tunic is done, I cut all of the threads, let the glue dry for 24 hours and then I ironed everything to finally seal all of the glued parts. The belt I make out of the same leather and beads I used for the bracelets. The only difference is that after stitching the beads I glued the second layer of leather to it from the back side, in order to make it more stable. This is my first time using this glue in sewing, but I can say that I'm positively surprised of how good it worked. No frail edges, no bulky seams, and the whole piece is still soft and flexible.
Hmm, something else is missing. It's your iconic headband, of course. Luckily for me, the original doll had some similar headband, which I could adjust with epoxy sculpt. I also add some additional holes to the sides of it, which will be needed in the future for attaching the pompons. Be careful with your fingers! <laughs> When I'm satisfied with the form, I paint everything with acrylic paint and cover it with one layer of varnish to protect the paint. I didn't have any pre-made pompons, so I made some myself out of yarn and then stitched them to the headband. Dof was a pretty small project comparing to what I usually do and yet so many details had to be made. And now that she's done I feel like this doll was made to become Toph because these big feet feel so natural for her. She's also the only doll I know who can stand on her own feet without the stand, which is impressive. Like you can say right away that this doll deserves to be called an earthbender. If you like the repaint, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel to not miss my next doll, which is going to be Malenia Blade of Mikula. And see you very soon! Thanks for watching!